Building a Multi-Tier Environment. In this section, we will continue to lay out the foundations of infrastructure automation with Terraform. By now we have learned how to create, update and destroy resources. So let's take this a step further and build something interesting. We will start with the network layer and create a new Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC, complete with an Internet Gateway, public and private subnets, network address translation gateways, and a bastion host. We will then use this new VPC to host a relational database service instance, running Postgres, to store our data. Next, we will create an Elastic Container Service Cluster and use it to deploy our application in Docker. In this section, we will build a multi-tier environment from the ground up. In doing all of this, we will learn a bunch of useful Terraform concepts that will take us to the next level of managing infrastructure as code. We will use the count metaparameter and splat expressions to create multiple copies of a resource without repeating its configuration. We will also introduce output variables as a way to organize data, which can then be easily queried and displayed to the Terraform user. Next, we will add data sources that can help us integrate our configuration with resources defined outside of Terraform or managed by a separate Terraform configuration. After this, we will learn how to use templates to generate complex string inputs to resources. And we will wrap up by exploring how Terraform uses the resource graph to model the dependencies between resources that it creates. This will be a very practical section, and the steps that we will take here are very similar to what you would do when you are provisioning a new environment. That said, this is a course on Terraform, not AWS, so I won't spend too much time explaining all the building blocks that we are going to use. Some basic understanding of AWS would be helpful, but is certainly not required. And if you are more familiar with some other cloud provider, the process of creating a new environment would be largely similar. Another warning that I have to repeat here is that the free tier covers many of the resources that we are going to create, but some will still cost a little bit of money. To give you a general idea of costs, NAT gateways will set you back by about 5 or 6 cents per hour for each gateway, and our load balancer can cost about 3 cents per hour. Keep a close eye on your billing, and don't forget to dispose of resources when you no longer need them, to keep your costs minimal. With that out of the way, let's get started. Starting to build a new environment. Let's take a really quick look at what we are going to build in this module. We will provision an Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, which enables us to launch AWS resources into a virtual network. We will then slice it into a bunch of public and private subnets. For high availability, we will use three availability zones, so each zone will have a public and a private subnet. The difference between the two is that resources in the public subnet can be accessed from the Internet. Private subnets are not directly accessible from the Internet, so we will need a bastion host, also known as a jump box, to access them. We will create an Internet gateway which allows communication between resources in our VPC and the Internet. And we will also add network address translation gateways to enable instances in a private subnet to connect to the Internet or other AWS services. There are also other components such as route tables or launch configurations which will support this infrastructure, but this diagram at least gives you a high-level understanding of what we are going to build. Alright, let's switch to the terminal and start a new project. I'm recording this on a Linux machine just to show that the workflow is essentially the same as on Windows. I'm going to build our network in a new Terraform configuration, so it will have a separate state file. In general, I prefer to keep the resources partitioned into logical groups, for example, to have separate projects for the network and the database. This will isolate our configuration from other resources and limit the blast radius of any changes. Now I will move into this new directory and initialize a new Git repository. I'm going to keep each Terraform project in a separate Git repository. This will make it much easier to understand and manage, and is similar to keeping different applications in separate repositories. Now it's time to create the scaffolding files. I'll start with the basic gitignore and the provider's configuration file. They will be largely the same as the files in our S3 Backbone project, so I'll just copy those. As you remember from the previous sections, after we create a new Terraform project, we need to run Terraform in it. OK, this makes sense. We haven't declared the variable. Let me quickly fix this. I'm going to create a new variables file. Copy the variable. And in fact, I'm going to rename it as well.
This will use the bucket that we created in the previous section as its backend to store the state file, and it will also download the plugins. Now it's downloading the plugins. Plugins can be quite large, and by default Terraform any downloads them into a subdirectory of the working directory, so that each project is self-contained. This means that if we have multiple configurations that use the same provider, then Terraform will download a separate copy of its plugin for each configuration. We are going to initialize several new projects in this section. All of them will be using the AWS provider, which is about 70 MB in size, so let's cache instead. We can add caching of plugins by setting an environment variables. We can cache plugins by setting an environment variable. Let me open my bash profile. And now I'm going to set the cache directory. Okay, let me save this and restart the terminal. Let me just double check that the environment variable was picked up. Okay, this looks good. Let's go back to the project and initialize it again. Right. Another thing that Terraform is telling us is that our provider doesn't have any constraints, so we could accidentally download the latest version, which contains some breaking changes. Let's fix this. And in fact, I will add a strict constraint here. This way we can be sure that our provider doesn't upgrade unless we want it. Out of curiosity, let's see what happens if we run Terraform plan. And I will need to set some defaults for this. Okay, we haven't changed the name of the state file, so we are using a wrong one here. Let's change the configuration and try again. This is the key that we have to change. Let's initialize. Let's start with an empty state, so we'll tap no. Okay, we are all set. Now it's time to add some configuration files. Okay, I've added some configuration files. There's a lot to digest here, let's check them out one by one. Here I'm creating a VPC and an Internet Gateway. Nothing too exciting about this, but notice how we rely on interpolation syntax to provide the CIDR block input parameter to our VPC. The gateway consumes the VPC ID attribute of our VPC resource, and we use interpolation syntax again. I'm also giving each resource a name tag, so it'll be easier to identify them in the web console. Next up, I'm declaring some input variables. These variables are assigned in the tfrs file. Notice that the availability zones variable is a list containing three values. Okay, here's where it gets more interesting. I want to create a public subnet in each availability zone for AZ. The naive way of doing this would be to repeat the resource three times, each time with a different AZ as a parameter. What I'm doing here instead is using a special metaparameter count. Metaparameters are available to all resources, and we covered one of such parameters previously when we talked about the lifecycle block. The count here equals the length of the list of our AZs, which is three, so I'm creating three copies of this resource, even though it's defined only once. So, when should you use count? A good rule of thumb is that whenever you are tempted to start naming your resources with numbers, instance 1, instance 2, and so on, you might consider using count instead. But it's always a balancing act. In some cases, the configuration of your resources may have some differences. For example, you may be creating a cluster of some sort, and you will have a leader node, and then a bunch of working nodes. In this case, your configuration will probably be more readable if you keep the leader node separate from the workers, and only use count to create the workers. Back to our VPC. To use a different availability zone in every subnet, I'm using a built-in element function, which returns a single element from a list at a given index. And I'm using another built-in function, CIDR subnet, to calculate a CIDR block for each subnet that we're creating. Notice also that, as it's a public subnet, I'm mapping a public IP on launch here. The private subnets are very similar, but they don't have public IPs. I'm giving each subnet a descriptive name tag, so we will be able to see in the web console whether it's a public or a private subnet, and which AZ it's in. Going down a little bit, we can see that there is a bunch of elastic IPs created, and then we create NAT gateways. The challenge here is that the gateways need to reference the subnets and the IPs that we created, but because we used count, we don't have a direct reference to each resource. We can resolve this by using a split expression, which you can see in action where we reference the subnet ID and the allocation ID. 
The split expression allows us to obtain a list of attribute values from a set of resources created using the count argument. Notice this asterisk, which represents all values in the generated list. Terraform.12 will support a generalized split operator, which will work with all list values. But in the current version, it's a special case which only works on resources created with count. OK, back to our editor. Here I'm creating some route tables, routes, and route table associations using count and the split syntax again. I'm setting up routing from the public subnets to the Internet Gateway. And I'm connecting the private subnets to Net Gateways. This is internal plumbing required to set up Internet connectivity. This module is getting quite long and there are more configuration files to go through. Let's pause here and continue in the next video.